Contrary to most of Shinjiro Watanabe's other directional works, Zankyo no Terror lasts only 11 episodes. The recently aired terrorist thriller impressed many with its sharp art style and impressive visual storytelling. It shot for a harsh, impactful story about morals. But did it have enough time to do so in only 11 episodes? Did it need more episodes, or was Watanabe aiming for a short but sweet experience? I'll be discussing this and more in my review of Zankyo no Terror. It's quite unclear where exactly the main focus of this show's story lies. At some points it's the effects and morals of terrorism, and at others it's about certain characters trying to find their purpose. Certainly the first three or four episodes are about terrorism. We get very little information about our main character as the story focuses on the bigger picture of their actions rather than the characters themselves. In many scenes, the characters are hidden behind masks to hide their identities, detaching them from the viewer. The only development we get from the characters in the early episodes are vague flashbacks and comic relief scenes. The lack of connection to the characters does confuse you at first, but comes together later on in the show. I like this. It let the viewer really get into the heads of our characters who are portrayed as empty. In the first half, instead of any character development, we get long scenes of police detectives trying to solve riddles. And yes, it's as dull as it sounds. The riddles and puzzles the terrorists create don't really relate to the overall story, and if they do, they have no impact. To be honest, this part of the show could have been summarised perfectly in one or two episodes. Instead, they dragged this out to try and seem smart. Unfortunately, it gave the exact opposite effect. Then weirdly halfway through the show, everything changes. From the style to the feel to the focus, everything takes massive turns in different directions. Some turning out okay, but some getting left behind in the dust. The police played a massively pointless role in the second half of the show, even disappearing at points when they should have been there. New characters were introduced and a good guy versus bad guy story was created. This is when, for me, the show took a big drop. It turned from a smartly written thriller that seemed realistic and interesting into a childish, poorly written fantasy story with plot holes. This by no means ruined the show, but it did take a massive part of why I liked the show away. It then started to contradict itself by trying to play the terrorists as good guys, creating a sympathy story and making the viewers feel bad for them. Take note that a few episodes earlier they were destroying whole buildings with bombs that would in turn destroy businesses, traumatise people and completely ruin people's lives. I've heard people making the argument that they didn't kill anyone, so it doesn't matter, which is a completely stupid argument. Even if they didn't kill people, they still negatively affected people that had nothing to do with the terrorists at all. They potentially ruined the lives of innocent people for no reason other than revenge, and were meant to feel sorry for the characters? The previous events are forgotten throughout the show anyway. Very rarely did anyone really mention the chaos the events should have caused. In fact, it just seemed as if the events caused no effect at all. No one seemed scared or traumatised that terrorists were blowing up random buildings in their city. Civilians just seemed bemused and completely oblivious despite having the event broadcast to them on giant TVs in the street. The story then forgets this and moves on to a more character driven experience. It seemed they just used the flashy character scenes, but unfortunately I was unable to connect with the characters due to my knowledge of them being completely evil human beings. The ending really reflected the story. The visuals were nice and it was directed brilliantly, but the story tended to avoid any real pondering of its themes and its characters choices. Many things were either touched more questions without answers. As I touched on there, the best thing about the show was its directing. Scenes were put together amazingly, really immersing you in kings of a great piece of work, but it fell short in too many areas for me to give it that title. The characters ended up being a massive part of the show, especially towards the end when we really got to know the characters. They opened up emotionally and gave us some nice scenes, but fell into a trap. Since they initially created the characters to be robot-like, when they added emotion, it felt weird. I found some scenes to be out of character and off-putting, like the scene in The Big Wheel were suddenly thrown into a romance. It went from almost zero to a scene like this. It surprised and confused me, but not in a good way. If they had slowly developed the characters and gradually given them emotions, then it would have been good. We would be able to see the characters change over the episodes as they experienced friendship and love. This would probably fix most of the problems with the story too. Instead, they just jumped from one thing to another with no development. 12 and 9 were the two main characters. They were meant to be geniuses as they were taken at a young age and trained to excel in certain areas. I feel like they could have used this much more than they did. Like I said earlier, the riddles and puzzles they created didn't feel like they were made by geniuses. They felt quite predictable and lacked the twists needed to make them exciting. 
The characters themselves were pretty enjoyable for the second half. They were quite engaging and I ended up enjoying what they had to offer. But throughout the first half they felt empty and boring, and due to the problems I brought up earlier about them being evil, I can't really credit them too much. The other character I particularly enjoyed was Shibazaki. This is how the main characters should have been written. I genuinely felt sympathetic for him as he was fighting for justice and sacrificing himself in order to do so, instead of sacrificing random innocent civilians. He didn't seem selfish and didn't make a fuss about his role in the story. Although his character was a bit dull and unrealistic, he created some enjoyable moments and ended up being the only character I could really admire. Maybe this was because he wasn't an annoying school kid like the rest of the cast. Speaking of annoying school kids, Lisa. Should we even call her a character? In the first half she was purely a damsel in distress, only there to create situations for the other characters. She provided no contribution to the story and just made the story even more unbelievable. In the second half she did change, but not for the good. She became a really random, uncalled for love interest. This sort of popped out of nowhere and seemed weird. It also had no effect on her as she remained helpless and annoying for the rest of the show. Even her character design was bland and forgettable. Lisa was less of a character and more of a plot device. The cast of characters ended up being fairly enjoyable, but too unrealistic for the type of show. Zankyo no Terra was animated by a studio called MAPPA. They hadn't really done much work by themselves, mainly helping out on other projects. Despite this, the animation for the show was very impressive and had a very unique style. They went for a bleak art style using a lot of dull and dark colours, but they made it interesting with a unique drawing style and superb detail. The backgrounds looked great, seemed dynamic and blended in with the show's feel. The fluidity of the animation was extremely impressive, especially in the fast-paced action scenes that, combined with the music and great directing, created countless extraordinary moments. I'm actually glad they went for a bleak art style. They used a lot of greys and dark shades to produce a mirror of the show's feel. The show was about terrorism after all, so it would be stupid to add bright colours. Some could argue that it was too dull, but personally I really like the gritty art style. It looked especially great from the scenes set at night, as the dark colour palette really came to life. The animation was undoubtedly high for a TV show, probably some of the best we've seen all year. I did have one problem though, the character designs. They used very minimal lines and details in the faces, especially in the eyes, that have very little detail anyway. This was a little off-putting at points and sometimes took away from the emotion of the scenes. You could argue that it was to reinforce the lack of happiness in the characters, but there were way better ways of doing that. The character designs in general were just very bland. Most characters wore the same dull clothes every episode, and even when they spiced things up with the introduction of Five, they just looked silly. I would have loved to have seen more intricate character designs, while also keeping the grim art style. The OST was much like the animation, it was unbelievably high quality. Some tracks really blew me away with the mixture of soft lyrics, moody instruments and mesmerising orchestral pieces. When they needed slow piano pieces, they got exactly that, and when they wanted uplifting instrumentals, they got exactly that again. As usual, Yoko Kano done a brilliant job with the OST. I did think that sometimes she went a little too overboard. Some tracks were so good and powerful that it took away from what was happening on the screen. I felt like I was just listening to a great song with some nice looking visuals in the background. In conclusion, Zankyo no Terra was an impressive anime. But that's about it. The show never captivated or inspired me. It just quickly impressed me, and then left. The story felt lacklustre and too short. The characters felt like they never had a chance to blossom, and the ending just left me feeling empty and disappointed. Compared to other anime that are coming out this year, Zankyo no Terra sticks out. But compared to a full backlog of anime, it's just another show. I really wish they'd given the story more time to gain focus and purpose instead of rushing everything, but maybe that's the effect Watanabe was going for. I like what the show hinted at for the future of the industry, but this certainly isn't something that will push anime forward. So that's been my review of Zankyo no Terror. If you enjoyed, please click the like button. If you want to share your opinion on the show, please do in the comments. And of course, subscribe to watch more anime related content. Thank you very much for watching.